the two together to fight a fire. We're a small community and we gotta, we gotta help each other out. Another wildfire sparks, this time in Sweetgrass County, but the community joins forces to help battle that fire. Plus, driving of a different kind on a Billings golf course. We had a guy jump the curb out here on Central and mow down the fence. A drunk driver crashes through a fence, damaging multiple holes at par three. The MTN 30 News starts right now. Good evening, everyone, for joining us on this Wednesday. I'm Andrea Lutz. Fires in size, dead fire near the Rose Bowls and Acres. But one of the newest fires right now is the Shank Bait. That fire is now about 300 Basin East Road are asked to prepare for evacuation. The Sweetgrass County Sheriff's and additional crews are hard at work looking to contain that fire. The community of to feed the fire crews. Our Alina Howder has the details. In small communities like here in Reed Point, it takes a village. That's why over a dozen volunteers met here at the Waterhole Saloon, hoping to feed those risking their lives fighting fires. In Up there is this fire, Basin Fire, also known as the Hobble Diamond Fire. That fire, which was sparked by lightning, was highly visible from interstate. Others in the community organically started talking about ways to help. this. A meal assembly line at the Waterhole Saloon to help feed firefighters. Big timber fire department they put together they put together meals for 40 for breakfast and we went all this time without food and water 50 fine ladies over here that that uh, put together put together a bunch of cheeseburgers and said I think I think there was a hundred and as long as the fire is raging these ladies will continue cooking they're putting out fires on friends property and I mean yeah least you can do is feed them. You do here in Montana. Nina Howder, MTN News. As well as Montana and the smoke is still in the air. Also, so air quality this afternoon. It is still either good or my ground. But thankfully, a lot of places don't have a lot of breathing difficulties for all of our residents. But it's still not ideal. Looking at the forecast for all the smoke, it is still going to be coming in over the northern Rockies for the next several days. We have that ridge of high pressure and control. And you can see a lot of it is coming around Oregon and Idaho. So we're not done with the smoke sky. But chances for showers and storms and more heat the forecast coming up. A drunk driver crashed through a fence on Central Par 3 Golf Course. Through some hard work, they were still open today. But that doesn't mean that the situation is any less fright. Charlotte shows us the damage left behind. Golfers at Par 3 on Tuesday were met with a shocking sight as this fence was destroyed by a driver before getting onto the course and destroying much of the area. But fortunately, the Greens crew worked quickly and were able to make sure everybody made their tee time this morning. Yeah, they really did a number on it. Probably did a number on their car, too. As golfers made their way through the par 3 golf course Tuesday, they were greeted by a brand new hazard on the back nine. Yeah, I've never seen anything like that out here before. The surprise hazard, a destroyed fence caused by what police are saying was a drunk driver who made their way onto the course around 1030 Monday night. Heck of a ride it looks like, but uh, but tough to see. When golf pro Matt Stricker first heard the news, he feared the worst. Where are we? You know, are we closed? You know, are we going to get it open? His concerns were valid. The driver cruised around the back nine before finally finding the parking lot, where he or she abandoned this vehicle and fled the scene. Billings police have yet to locate the driver. Yeah, you can see where they right through the middle of the I mean almost geographically right through the middle while the fence along Central Avenue is the most noticeable the course suffered other damage like the tire tracks yeah, on this green all right let's do it huh and there's problems on other holes too with damage to several greens and tee boxes as well as tire tracks along the fence lining 19th Street we're mid-season so any damage that's out. She's coming at perhaps the worst time. During the busy summer months, the Greens crews got to work immediately, putting the course back together. They work hard and, you know, it's it's their baby, you know, so so they take it very personal when something like that happens. By Tuesday morning, somehow, some way, things were back in full swing. Playing ground. MTN News. A wrong way crash on Interstate 90 near Livingston has left a Bozeman woman critically injured. The crash created a lot of attention as nearly 20 different calls came into dispatch before it actually happened. MTN's Heaven Vaughn explains. Another wrong river on 90 last week, a Bozeman woman in critical condition. According to round seven, were dispatched to mile marker 328 for a head-on collision. 
According to MHP, a driver was heading westbound in the eastbound lane of I-90. They collided with a vehicle driven by 23 Taylor Bong, who was on the interstate after work. Both drivers sustained severe injuries, Bornog for treatment. According to a GoFundMe to raise money for her recovery, Bornog was placed into a coma and has undergone two surgeries to repair a burn and humerus. He talked to his neighbor off a of frontage road, who says he heard and saw the whole accident. He says that semi-trucks could be seen lining the highway, blaring their horns as a warning to other drivers. He says more than 19 calls were made to police to the crash about a wrong way driver. Able to say where the driver entered the interstate, traveling the wrong way for up to four minutes. No arrests have been made at this time. MHP says a blood test was taken and county attorneys are talking reports. After the condition of both drivers is further updated. For more information on how you can help the victim and her family, visit our website. In Livingston, Heaven Van, MTN News. Tonight is Republican Vice Presidential nominee J.D. Vance's time in the spotlight. The junior senator from Ohio will headline night three of the Republican National Convention. Delegates say they're excited about the choice and his speech. Natalie Brand has more details from Milwaukee. New GOP vice presidential nominee J.D. Vance made an appearance at an event in Milwaukee ahead of his big speech tonight. I joke with the president that, uh, you know, and uh, I don't plan to screw it up, but it's too late. He made the pick, right? Former President Trump, who did his own convention stage walkthrough this afternoon, is expected to be back in the hall tonight to hear Vance introduce himself to the country. His background, you understand that he came from very humble beginnings. Vance is expected to share his personal story, rising up from poverty and his family's struggles with drug abuse, as documented in his memoir, Hillbilly Elegy. Indiana alternate delegate Becky Bechtel says she's reading the book now. How do you think that personal story is going to play into the rest of campaign season? I think that he has an empathy with the American people that a lot of other politicians, if you will, do not have. The Trump campaign is also highlighting foreign policy on convention day three. Mayor John David Longo of Slippery Rock, Pennsylvania is a Marine Corps veteran. As a veteran, what will you be listening for? More uh, strength uh, on, on the national stage. Um, having been like a stand, um, it's very important that we, that we project strength. There's an expectation Russia's war with Ukraine will come up tonight. Senator Vance is vocal critic of additional U.S. military aid for Ukraine, alarming some in the Republican Party. Vance has also made a journey from outspoken Trump critic to running mate, ready to officially accept the VP nomination tonight. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Milwaukee. A Helena judge is siding with two groups challenging the Montana Secretary of State's office over signatures to qualify two ballot initiatives for November. However, there's questions about where the process goes from here. MTN's Jonathan Anberian was in the courtroom. He has more. A district court hearing on Tuesday focused on how state laws are interpreted when counting signatures for ballot initiatives and on what the impacts would be if the Secretary of State's office continues not to count signatures from voters who are on the inactive list. Montana law says to sign a petition for a ballot measure, you must be a qualified voter. The Secretary of State's office recently told county officials that inactive voters who haven't voted in recent elections or responded to correspondence from election offices don't meet that requirement. The groups sponsoring measures to add abortion rights to the state constitution and reform Montana's election system sued the secretary. Plaintiff's attorneys said the office is misinterpreting the law and it's unreasonable to change course at this point when counties and signature gatherers started with different guidance. Nothing on here about better check to make sure you're active, better check to make sure you're inactive. This is their form, it's proven on test report that we use. Attorneys for the Secretary of State's office said they took a closer look at the law in response to a county election official's question, and they're convinced this is the right issue. We have the oath to support the Constitution. That's what we're doing to stop the three ballot measures from qualifying. So there was the issue of the right to participate in the initiative process. And that's not a right for these entities. It's a, it's a right for Montana citizens. Menahan said he'd issue a temporary restraining order to say inactive voter signatures should be counted for now, but he wanted both sides to work together on how to structure the order, minimize extra stress on officials still going through signatures. The parties are set to be back in this court Johnny 6 a week from Friday for a hearing on whether to place a longer-term injunction. 
In Helena, Jonathan Amberian, MTN News.